Hi. Sorry, this is going to be a little later than I planned. Um, I've been wrestling technology for you and all of my um, different choirs and students, and I've been pretty pleased. Uh, frustrating, of course, I'm sure you know if you've wrestled technology, but I've been pretty pleased so far. But today, I tried some new things with audio, had some issues with um, battery and upload speeds, and I, I'm afraid technology mostly got the upper hand. I'm not dissatisfied with the rehearsal I have for you coming up, but I hope you'll uh, give me some forgiveness and uh, take it with a grain of salt as you go through. I am learning to get better and better at this and to do some new things technologically, and I'm excited about what that means for next week. Uh, but I'm out of time and I'm going to give you this somewhat rough draft today. Um, so thanks for your time and your patience with that. The thing I didn't quite get around to saying at the end was um, if you haven't yet uh, throughout the video, if you pause and work on emanations a little bit in those sections, go right ahead. But if you haven't worked on the learning tracks and worked out the notes for those first two pages, um, go ahead and do that on your own. I didn't actually get around to inviting you to do that at the end of the video because I was worried I would lose another one as if the battery ran out. Um, I need to get an extension cord. I have one, I just didn't know in advance. But hey, we're learning new skills, whether I like it or not. And I'm glad to see you, so away with the rehearsal. Good evening, members and friends of the Bernathan Cathedral Choir. Here we are in another week of online rehearsal. I get a lot out of thinking that you might get something out of these yourselves. I've uh, talked to a few folks who are feeling pretty overwhelmed and wanted to apologize that they may not keep up with this project of working on Max's new piece at the moment. Um, I, I always feel bad if I'm leaving someone out, but you can't necessarily serve everyone. So I'm going to keep making these videos because I think I've, I've heard back from some other folks that are enjoying just the chance to have our choir routine available each week to do a little bit of guided singing uh, with my ugly mug. As you can see, I do really need a haircut. I've, uh, due to this shelter in place, it's not really responsible for me to go over. Uh, you, some of you know Keith Gruber. He cuts my hair for me, but uh, I now have to see if I can convince Robin to do it. And if I get desperate enough, I'll take scissors to my own in the mirror. So who knows what you're going to see next week, but I hope I will see you next week. But also, if you've been watching these but feeling just overwhelmed by everything and this is one more thing, please know that's not why I'm making them. I'm not making them to do that. And if you need to take a break, absolutely take a break. I hope we'll be singing together again at some point soon in the future. It will happen one of these days. For now, I'd like to keep working on uh, emanations. So I gave you a link last time and I'll put one down below again uh, so that you can go to a Dropbox folder uh, which is online. You should, by clicking the link, just be able to go there, although some people have had trouble. If you have trouble, you can email me, and I will simply find another way to get you the score, whether I just attach it straight back to you and the learning tracks, whatever you need. Just You've got to let me know or I won't be able to help you. Um, yeah, so I thought we'd do a little warm-up and we'd work a little bit more on emanations just because it's, it's such an interesting piece. I've been spending my time, uh, some of my time, getting to know it a little bit. But uh, before we do, let's get singing a little bit. I invite you to just take a minute or two in this video and do some stretching. If you didn't do so beforehand, I will stay seated and do a little bit myself. Robin and I have been doing well. We're pretty happy here at home. I mean, we're definitely concerned about everything that's going on and worried about what it means. And we're, you know, worried for friends and family too. We've, we've got some friends and family who have come down with it. I just heard about a singing colleague of mine, an old classmate, who's actually in the hospital with this. Uh, she's my age, so and I don't know of any underlying health conditions, so we're all hoping that everything will turn out okay. But there's just so much to wonder about. and I've been very grateful uh, to have my online teaching at Kutztown and Bernathan College, uh, and to have my online rehearsals for you and the Red and Coral Society, and then working with the ministers to keep providing some bits of music for these uh, stream services. Obviously, we're not going to do anything too extravagant um, because I don't want to be irresponsible with what's going on. But uh, there we are. Yeah, a little bit of stretching. Did you stretch your neck yet? And let's just take a couple of deep breaths. I think last week I focused a little bit on sort of the concept of meditative breathing. So if you want to take it that way in particular, just particularly focus on your in and out breaths, nice and slow. Now, 
as you're breathing, I will say that uh, there are other people who offer online yoga courses and meditation and that sort of thing. And I think there are some overlaps with choir warm-ups, but I'm not going to go too deep down that path. So let's actually do some intentional breathing separations here. Uh, I would like you to ex uh, make your muscles work to breathe in. So if you make a little straw and suck in against that, and then out through the nose. How about in through the nose and then a sigh out the mouth nice and easy. And let's take a nice easy breath in through the mouth and then out through a straw. Really pushing. There's different things you can do to wake up these different muscles, the different routines I go through. One of the ones I always like to do is separating out the diaphragmatic breathing from the ribcage breathing, so taking a nice low diaphragm breath. And out. And then keeping the belly button in and trying to just expand the ribcage independently. And then a nice deep breath doing both of them. You know, I'm doing something I often tell the choir not to do. I'm demonstrating breathing because I'm trying to get you to breathe, but that's actually, you don't want it to be audible when you breathe if you're really open. Then there's less friction friction with the, with the vocal cords and the air going over them. So the more silently you can breathe, the better. I just realized I was modeling badly there. All right, let's do a little bit of sliding. I'm gonna start on a B flat, and we'll go up a fifth and back down on a V. Your turn. I played the wrong chord. Let's try that one again. Sorry to interrupt you for my bad piano skills. if you like them because going up in range and down in range can feel a little different and that's part of what we're focusing on is just getting everything in line connecting the breath support to the sound here to a bit of back pressure but you can make that back pressure with a Z if you get bored of the V Z go for it major I nearly didn't get that 5-7 chord correct there but thank you for your patience uh, Terry and I did think jokingly a little bit about trying to team up for these we'll see we may yet do something um, I am hoping also to maybe chat a little bit with Max at some point just to talk about this piece in a little more depth so I'll try and get you some guest visitors as well just to keep these things from being the uh, all the grand beer show because goodness knows we've already got enough of that in our lives so more warm-ups with me, myself, and I, and hopefully you too. I hope you are in a position where you can sing along. You know, another thing that I don't remember if I addressed uh, last week, maybe you're not always in a position where you feel like you can sing along. Um, you can still study the music silently, um, but hopefully you can talk to other people in, the, in your living situation and find a time when you can watch this video and actually sing a little bit because, uh, well, you know how I feel about the value of singing in everyone's lives in so many different ways. Um, and if you don't, drop me an email. You're in for a treat. Okay, let's do a little bit more warming up. Let's connect the breath to a more bouncy diaphragm feel. Um, ah, 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 ah. Just bouncing down the scale from so down to do on ha. Ah. That's around an E. 
Um, so some of you might have felt a little bit of push there if you're a low alto or bass, but you know how warm-ups work. Stretch yourself a bit and then uh, take care of yourself if you need to drop the octave or drop out. Uh, these are for you, but not necessarily every note of every one of them. They're for the average. Okay, well, I'm just going to take a little moment. I'm here not to just to keep you singing, but also to uh, entertain you and connect with you a little bit. Um, being my own accompanist, I'm now going back into that world. I've, I've done choirs before where I didn't have an accompanist. Actually, uh, Bernathan College Chorale is a little bit that way, although I'm working different sorts of music that don't require as much of it as well, sort of by intention. But um, accompanists are often trying to think about how to play during warm-ups in a way that supports the singers and maybe entertains everyone a little bit, particularly the accompanists themselves. So there are different ways that you can harmonize things. For instance, that's a descending scale. I'll give you a little bit of piano here in case you're into that. If you don't know how pianos work, then just listen along and marvel like I do, because I'm not an accompanist, but here's a little bit of music theory just for fun. That's just a C major scale, starting on the fifth scale degree and going down. So fa mi re do. Very basic, and we keep repeating that and moving up the scale. But C major is the easiest for me because it's all the white keys, and I can ignore the black keys, which simplifies the way I can think about things. So I'm going to figure this out in C major. If I'm starting on the fifth, but I want you to know you're in the key of C major, I will start with a C chord. So fa. I can actually just play the chord that is on the fourth scale degree, and then I could keep doing that trick. That might be a little bit boring. If I just did that, da, 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 and built a chord on each of those notes, it would go like this. So, fa, mi, re, do. A little bit parallel. We could get more interesting. What if I created something that's a little bit more of a harmony? What if for that soul, like I said, I show you where you're in C major by actually playing the chord a fifth below? So that note is that we first sing is now at the top of the chord I'm singing. So, and then I could move up to a minor two. Fa, mi, re, do. So I didn't explain too much of what I did there, but if you're into music theory, I did a, a one chord and then a two chord, to minor two chord, and then I went back to a one chord but inversion because I was going the opposite direction with the bass line, I was going up. And then I went through the scale all the way up to a five chord because that helps you get back to do. Anytime you want to get somewhere in music theory, anytime you want to get back to home bass, you go through a dominant or five chord. And if you can figure out a way to get there, you're in good shape. I could do different harmonizations. For instance, I could start with a bit of a minor. Um, so Of different ways you could harmonize that but if I were a great keyboard player I would figure out some different options there and then each time we go up the scale I would be able to do them in all of those different keys um, but as you've all learned over the years I am NOT the greatest keyboard player I just understand some of the theory behind it and I do find it interesting I hope you do too whether or not you understand the gibberish the language that has been created to discuss it um, that you can certainly hear what's going on there, and I hope you enjoy that. Let's sing a little bit more. Let's get a range exercise going. I'm going to have you go for... So take a nice low breath, and remember we're sliding... And the E to the AW helps us make a nice tall shape for the high note, but don't forget the back of your jaw as well. Don't just go e in the front. e Nice and tall at the back. All right.
let me just mention, if if your life has changed in such a way that not only are you singing less than you would in a normal week um, and, for a, and for a shorter amount of time, but also maybe talking a little bit less. For some of us, we're talking maybe more because of dealing with all of these online interactions um, and all these extra meetings to figure out what we're going to do next and how we adapt. But uh, you may find that a note that you thought was easy or comfortable back when you were regularly in choir and also singing on Sundays and singing hymns and uh, maybe you'll discover that, that that's not quite there for you as much. And that's one of the reasons to keep singing because these muscles can uh, deteriorate if we don't use them and, it, and then it takes some time to slowly build them, slowly and healthfully build them back up because they are small, delicate muscles. So do be patient with yourself with these warm-ups. All right, I'm going to look a little bit at emanations now. So let's start at the beginning. Basses and tenors, just pay attention because this is a concept that gets to you shortly. Right at the beginning of the music, if you want to bring it up on your screen, um, I suppose I could do that pretty easily here. Give me just a sec. I didn't think this through. I might cut this part out, but if I'm really quick, I won't. File, new finder window, downloads, emanations, final version. I did. Max just sent me a slightly updated version of the PDF. So if you go again to the Dropbox for the PDF, you'll notice that he took away those little uh, s split or combine arrows that didn't need to be there for the tenor and the bass. The combine arrows, I think it was. Um, and a couple of other little adjustments that he made. Well, this is fantastic. I am learning more and more about using this technology. Check this out. Here we go. I'm not even going to trim that little moment just to show you that I'm learning too. Emanations, you should be able to see it now. There's the soprano one, soprano two, alto one, alto two. Sopranos and altos, I would like you to learn the composite melody. That's just a fancy way for saying I would like you to learn everyone's part. Because you're each taking turns moving, of course, you're gonna eventually just sing your part and that's what the learning tracks are about. But for this rehearsal, I want you to actually to move around. Um, soprano two and alto, you actually both start at the same time but I'm going to uh, build it up both ways. So everybody sing the following. I'm gonna start with the alto two, and then the next note that happens vertically, as you see there, I'll bring my pointer up. There's, there's alto two right there. The next note that happens vertically is the soprano one. And then the next note after that that happens vertically is the alto one. So if we're moving a vertical line horizontally, I don't have a vertical line here, it's soprano two, alto two at the same time, then the next note to be sung is by soprano one. So I'm going to have us sing these all as quarter notes and move around. I'm going to start with the alto two, I'm going to jump to the soprano one, then the alto one, then the soprano two. That's the reason I chose alto two over soprano two at the beginning, because the soprano two does have the fourth movement out of these four voices, even though she starts with the alto two as well. This is the composite melody you will get. Alto two, soprano one, alto one, soprano two, alto two, soprano one, alto one, soprano two. That's what I want to do, except we're going to sing the actual syllables that are there. So you actually get to sing the whole sentence yourself all the way up to the word good. Um, that's all the further I'll go for right now. So everybody, all, all sopranos and altos, and basses and tenors, if you're along, we can do this down the octave. In fact, I'll do it down the octave. Here's your note, uh, sopranos and altos, and I'm down here with the tenors and the basses, so it's going to go, just listen once. Emanations from the Lord are... And then I have to make a decision. I think it's going to be the same pattern. Good and... That would be the soprano one. And then truth is the alto one. Truth. And in this particular case, everybody sings the word in, but I'm going to take the composite rhythm as being the same. So it's the soprano twos who move last again. In. And then we get the full chord. So we'll just stay there on soprano two. That's my plan. Do it with me. One, two, quarter notes. Here we go. Emanations from the Lord are good and truth in. And then it's the four, full chord. Great little cluster chord there on the, on the crescendo to the forte. So it sort of builds up together and then we end up with all of those notes. Let's try that again. Two, ready, and... Emanations from the Lord are good and truth in... 
Yeah, I'm not too worried about the last note being part of that. So I really want you all to know that melody as a melody, even though you are only doing a little part of it. It's like that game I've sometimes played where we sing Row, Row, Your Boat, and I go first. I'm going to try that right now. I have no way to judge you. Here's C major. Row, row, boat, lee, the, merly, i, merly, i, life, but, dream. I mean, that's... I've clearly practiced this a lot. I use that exercise with a lot of choirs because it's a tune everybody already knows. But that's a little bit what's going on here. We're teaming up to create not just words in a sentence, but we're teaming up to create, I would say, a melody. And I want you to think of it melodically that way. Now, of course, you would only sing your own parts. Um, if you haven't worked on that section of the music yet in terms of the learning tracks, I invite you to pause this video right now and go listen to your learning track for that opening section and just work a little bit on it now that you've sung the composite melody a few times. Now work on your own part, but listening to the others. If you didn't pause me and you, and you want to try singing through it right now, um, or even if you did and you've come back, let's just do it one time together. Soprano twos, you're the ones for whom it's the most difficult because I taught you the composite rhythm with the alto twos being the starting note. So your version, soprano twos, if you want to make it up, would be something more like this. Emanations from the Lord. So we, we have to ignore the alto two note because you overlap with it. Um, anyway, here are the notes. Alto two soprano two, and then eventually alto one, soprano one. So here, I'll play all four parts. Ready? And. Great. Now, you may have noticed in the learning tracks, I kept things very steady. I didn't do any of the fermatas. I didn't do any of the tempo changes. Obviously, we'll be doing those as we work on it together when we finally put this together. But um, it's easier for me with the learning tracks just to have a, a clicking metronome going along and not to try to be too fancy. I know you wouldn't want me to waste my time with how much we're all doing right now to go online. I'm down on the second system now. Tenors and basses, you've waited nicely. Um, bass is your part's really quite easy, as you'll have heard from the learning track. It's pretty much the same note over and over again, and then it goes down to a low F. If there are any basses who feel that that low F is too low, I would note that the tenor line is really a comfortable baritone line, and you could consider the tenor line. Uh, with the number of basses we've had lately on a Sunday morning, I am worried about trying to create, recruit more tenors and basses for the future to balance out this choir better. Um, so it's funny that I'm offering that baritones can shift up to tenor when I need more basses at the particular moment, but I'd rather have you all singing where you're comfortable, and the more people we have in choir, the easier it is to sing comfortably. That's just a truth. So here we get the sopranos and altos continuing what they're doing. Light and warmth and love and wisdom in each It's the same note, same rhythms, you just have a different sentence to sing. Light and warmth and love and wisdom in each living soul. I love how that, you're all just responsible for a little part of it. It's sort of ultimate choral teamwork to create that sentence. Um, however, at the same time, we've got the tenors singing a bit more of a melodic thing. It goes like this, tenors, it really starts quite low. Light and warmth and love and wisdom in each, in each and every soul. That's a nice melody, and that's sort of what we're decorating at this point, even though we didn't have it on the top system. So why don't you go ahead and sing along? Anyone who wants to can sing along with this melody. Ready? And go. Light and warmth and love and wisdom in each, in each and every soul. If we put that together with the bass, it goes something like this. Light and warmth and love and wisdom in each, in each and every soul. So I was playing the bass and singing the tenor there, you probably figured it out. And that's just a new little element. So we've got the sopranos and altos repeating the same structure, but with new words, and the tenors and basses come in with a different structure. You've got complete sentences there, tenors and basses. So take note of that. And I think we're going to try and sing that as legato as we can. So once again, tenor and bass, I'm looking for 
rather than light and warm. And we've already sort of got that ringing bell tone where the sopranos and altos are passing the syllables around to each other. And I think tenors and basses, it would be ideal if we actually go for more of a lyrical line since you get to sing almost all the text. Well, the tenors get to sing all the text. Um, basses, you have to let tenors take care of the and warmth part for us. Well, and the altos, uh, alto ones. Um, but yeah. Light and warmth and love and wisdom in each, in each and every. Rather than light and warmth, it'll be tempting ensemble-wise to feed into what's happening in the other structure with the sopranos and altos, but, but basses and tenors, let's not. Really smooth. I'll play the tenor and sing the bass this time. Um, if altos and sopranos want to sing their own part, it's the same as the top, so here's the... Alto two, soprano two, and then soprano one, alto one. Alto two, soprano two. And there's bass and tenor notes. Ready? And. Light and love. I didn't get it going. I thought I was going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to save us all the pain of that. It failed earlier today. Let's just, I'll just play the lower part. Sopranos and altos, you're on your own. Ready? Go. Light and love and wisdom in each, in each and every soul. And then we all stay on the same note for the next chord, except for the alto ones. Alto ones, they resolve that. They go, and then you have to go back up to the first note. But everyone else just stays on the same note. And this is the chord you hear. If you listen to the full version like I signed you last week, you'll already know this chord. Uh, let me actually get that. It doesn't sound as good on the piano as it will in the voices, I think, in terms of balancing and tuning that chord. All right. That's the opening of the piece, which I wanted to introduce. There's a little bit more that I'm going to do this week, though I won't go into too much depth. Everybody, I'm on page two, measure 11. <laughs> you are too, if you're looking at the screen. Um, I would like to focus now on the melody. This next section, no matter what part you're singing, the tenors start off with the melody. So let's all get to know that a little bit. I'll sing it a few times. Just this, this system, these four measures. One, two, sing along if you like, if you're ready to. Three and four. Lead me, Lord, in life of righteous living, life apart from sinning. Keep me safe from harm. Yeah, I got that right eventually. Let's do it again. And this time, if you were listening, maybe try and hum along a little bit. If you're still learning it, you can listen another time. Three and four. Lead me, Lord, in life of righteous living, life apart from sinning, keep me safe from harm. And actually, um, I'm not exactly sure, I'll have to talk to Max, what he does with the melody there. Do the tenors still sing the melody there on keep me safe from harm, or does it transfer over to the basses? That would be interesting. Join me here, choir, because this is a little chance for you to see me as I continue to analyze a new piece and prepare it for rehearsal with you. I'll give you some insights there. So what if the tenor line, this is measure 13, the third measure, went, Life apart from sinning, keep me safe from harm. That's a little more melodic feeling, so I don't know if Max wanted a very still melody like he wrote in the tenor, or if the fact that the basses have more of a moving part means that they pass the melody over to the basses. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. And, and, and I'm not sure if, if he thought about it in that way or not. I mean, sometimes you can ask a very leading question. I've worked with so many composers where I'll be studying a piece, preparing it for rehearsal, and I'll call them up. Uh, not Bach, obviously, but, you know, when I'm premiering a piece. Um, and I'll call them up and I'll say, hey, that's really brilliant what you were doing on that page, but did you mean it this way or that way? And they'll just look at me. They, well, I don't know what their faces look like because this is before Skype most of this work that I did, but uh, they, they'll just say, oh, Oh yeah, sure, that's what I meant to do. And actually it might turn out they were thinking about something completely different because there are so many layers when you start dealing with language and music. It's, 
You can tell I'm obsessed with it. That's why I'm fascinated. So that's our melody. We'll do it one more time, um, and we'll stick with the, we'll stick with the tenor part. Oh no, let's have fun and do the composite melody. So tenors don't get confused. But we're gonna switch to the basses in the last bar, and that's me inventing that it's a composite melody. I actually don't know either way. Ready? Three and four. Lead me, Lord, in a life of righteous living, life apart part from sinning. Bass part. Keep me safe from harm. Yeah, and right at that little keep me safe from harm part, we have this wonderful structure. Uh, there's a lot going on here melodically. Let's, let's look, in fact, at the alto and the soprano a little bit. They start crossed. So altos, you have the higher note on lead, and then it gets normal again. Although you do have a unison moment on a uh, of away on the beginning of the next measure, so don't be spooked by those. And then when you get to the last measure altos, you stay up there on the A on keep and the uh, sopranos drop down below you again. So watch out for that voice crossing. Young composers, when they're taking music theory one and two, they're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to cross voices, but it's something that happens all the time in music. But when it does, we're not as used to it. So altos go, lead me, Lord. And sopranos go, lead me, Lord. So they start opposite. This is the alto note. This is the soprano note. Try that at the same time. Ready? And. And then a unison. There's a lot of clashing and crunching that goes on here in terms of really good dissonances that help us drive the piece forward. Um, so one of the things I want to point out, altos, um, you, were, you may be working your uh, learning tracks alone, but I want to point out some difficulties. So one thing, altos, is you start higher than the sopranos in measure 11, and you end up higher than the sopranos for the first two notes of measure 14. However, altos, you also have to make a difficult leap into the note of measure 13. Lead me, Lord, away from sin. It's a difficult leap because that's a tritone, right? It's like the septa horn is what I call it because it's, it's a very difficult interval. However, it's not that hard. Look what Max did for you. The first note of every measure is just an upward scale. So, so alto, sing this for me. G, B, B. Right? Lead, O, C. Well, once you start breaking it down that way, it doesn't necessarily mean anything sensible or necessarily what the song means. But if you just sing the first note of every measure, altos, Sin, keep. That's a scale. And if you can keep that in your mind, you don't have to do the difficult interval from. You simply go up another note on the downbeat. Lead me, Lord, away from sin. So that's one way to learn these sorts of things. Sopranos, you've got an easier part. Lead me, Lord, away from sin. You're doing a wonderful upward scale there, Sopranos. I really like that idea of keep me safe by lifting me up to the Lord or lead me upward in my mind. Um, so, Sopranos, you're responsible for that at that point, melodically speaking. In terms of finding that note on keep, if you're having any trouble, Sopranos, it's sort of where the basses are leading you to. Let's try Soprano and bass at the same time, if I can do that. Nice pairing. One of the things that we lose here is we don't. I don't get to pair up the voices as easily, so I'm actually going to seek ways to do that. So um, yeah, let's have now the basses and the altos working together, so you can get used to that harmonic context. Altos, ready, and. that all together with the tenor. Well, I'll leave my multi-track for you to experience that all in full. But yeah, take a look at this section and uh, get to know it a little bit. Um, I'm going to go down one more system, and here we have, oh, interesting, Sopranos. I'm, 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 I'm playing. I've studied this piece. Sopranos, look at how your part looks a lot like the tenor part. I would argue that um, Max has written 
the tenor melody, and then he's handed it to the sopranos in measure 15. Whatever happens in measure 14, I, I, I'm not sure there, but sopranos then have, and tenors, you can sing along here, it's the same. Lead my soul beside your calming waters, beside your sons and daughters. So it's a little bit different at the at the end there, and some of the rhythms are different, and the words, of course, are because it's continuing. But yeah, the sopranos now have the melody. So something we're going to want to do is try to pass the melody from the tenors to the sopranos. Have you noticed the dynamics? Measure 11. Are they different across the different parts? Not just your dynamics, but who's singing the same dynamic as you and who isn't? Aha. So the tenors are forte and then they decrescendo at the end of the system while the bass is crescendo to a forte. That gives me a little bit of a clue that yes, maybe the melody is passing over here. And then you go down a system and now the sopranos are marked forte and everyone else is mezzo forte. The altos had never changed. So that can be a little clue to you when you're studying a piece uh, from scratch like I have been with this piece. Um, oh, I bet he passed the melody up to the sopranos. You can also tell because it looks like the melody goes up to the sopranos. Let's sing that sopranos with the words and anyone else who wants. Ready? And go. Lead my soul beside your calming waters, beside your sons and daughters. There you are. And the lower voices, we've got uh, a little bit of harmony in the tenors and the bass. Let's do that. Now, basses, you have to leap up a seventh there. That's difficult as well. And that's something I would work on you with you in rehearsal and, and don't in the learning tracks. You have to kind of notice that it's difficult yourself and stop and replay that part. So I'll work it now. Basses, you go, lead my soul. That's hard on its own. But if you're with the tenors, you actually, your my is a note below their soul. Lead, lead my soul, my soul. So basses, maybe that helps to do it together. Let's try it. I'll sing the bass this time and just play the tenor, but both can sing. Ready? And lead my soul beside your waters, daughters all. There's something I really love about this part that Max did, which is really clever. I didn't flip to the next page yet, but um, we'll get there in a sec. And then altos. Let's do alto against bass. One, two, ready, and. Lead my soul beside, beside. And now we break it down. So, working all those parts together, we'll do that another time. And this next section, he finishes the sentence all, but like the beginning of Alleluia. And I just think that's a really clever little construction. I'm just so impressed with what Max is doing with this piece. I'm seeing a low battery signal, and I am actually wrapping up the end of my lesson plan that I made for you, so I'm going to stop this right here. It's really nice to work with you, and I'm going to go plug in before I lose this whole video. Hope you have an okay week. I'll be in touch next week.